After a long time, I have been very excited for a new language model. Uh, so this model is DeepSeek R1. This is from a Chinese startup called DeepSeek. Uh, this model is just mind blowing. It has performance on par with OpenAI O1. It is fully open source. They even released a technical report, right? It's a fully open source model. It is also MIT licensed, so you can distill and commercialize it freely, right? They have released a website as well and an API for you to use it. Now, what sets this model apart from all the other, uh, you know, large language models which are currently present, right? So O1, which came from OpenAI, was the kind of first thinking model. So basically, when you ask a query to the LLM, it kind of thinks over the solution and then gives you a response. Okay. It could be implemented via various ways like chain of thought, right? Or the different types of uh, thought frameworks, right? But over here, what I really liked about its performance is the thought which it generates is very close to how a human would think towards a solution, right? I'll show you certain examples over here of the queries, um, uh, you know, the queries which I tried and the kind of thought process which is coming up from this DeepSeek R1. Then we would go into details of what is DeepSeek R1 in terms of parameters and all those other things, okay? So you can try over here in chat.deepseek.com. You can create an account over here. I just created an account with my Google Mail account. And then I just was, I have been working on text to SQL for a long time now. So I was just like, okay, let me ask a question over here. I said, I need to develop a text to SQL library in Python. I have database credentials for connecting with the MySQL database. User would ask questions in natural language. The library should convert to SQL queries and then run it on the database, fetch the results and make, make an inference on the results based on user query and should present the result back to the user. Okay, for text to SQL, I said use deep seek R1 as LLM. Okay, so and you have to press this deep think, then it will make use of you know this particular model. All right, over here. Um, so it thought for 60 seconds, that's what it says over here. So here is the thought, okay, which this model has generated. It says, I need to create a Python library basically, and it says, let me break this down step by step. First, I need a library needs to connect to a MySQL database. The user will provide credentials. I probably will use the MySQL connector. This is how exactly I think when I'm trying to create this solution, right? I need a class to connect to my database. Okay. For the natural language processing part, the user input will be in English. It needs to be converted to SQL. And it says the user mentioned DeepSeek R1, but I'm not super familiar, but I think it is an API similar to OpenAI's. I need to interact, figure out how to interact with it. Wait, is it an open source or an API? If it is an API, I'll need an API key to make HTTP request. If it is a local model, then I have to load it using hugging something like hugging face transformers. Uh, it might require an API key or a model path. Okay. The user just said, let's see, uh, but didn't specify. Maybe it's via an API. Let me proceed under the assumption that it is an API similar to OpenAI requiring an API key. Then for the text to SQL converter class, it needs a method to take the natural language and generate the SQL prompt engineering here is crucial. The model needs to know the database schema to generate accurate SQL. How does the model know the schema? The user database could have multiple number of tables. So you need to somehow get the schema information and include it in the prompt to the LLM. Okay. So what I'm amazed is like, you know, the kind of steps which it is putting over here is exactly what I thought when I was developing this solution. Okay, the uh, steps look very close to how a human thinks uh, over, you know, uh, uh, you know, the thoughts are quite close to what a human is thinking, right? And then it goes about telling about, you know, I can use SQL queries like this, I can do a lot of things, right? Uh, you know, it kind of takes into account the various possible scenarios over here and a lot of other things. And then it is actually able to generate a solution. So uh, finally, it says that putting it all together, this is the workflow connect to the database, retrieve the database schema, used to convert natural language to SQL, validate SQL to prevent unsafe operations, execute SQL, used to analyze the results and return the response to the user. So I like how this thought process is done and after the thought process, it kind of generates the code over here. Okay, now how accurate is this code? I don't know, I need to try it out. But at least the thought process is what 
I liked over here and how it is actually breaking a problem into sub problems, right? So this is quite, uh, this is not exactly a reasoning problem, right? This is more about I have, a, you know, I need to develop a solution, a software solution, and I'm asking it for, you know, software design and then the, um, you know, code, right? What this model excels, they say, is in reasoning problems, right? Um, so they um, they say it exceeds the benchmark of OpenAI O1 on these reasoning benchmarks. Okay, so I was uh, I could uh, try this, you know, uh, in Hugging Face chat also. A smaller version of this particular model is available on Hugging Face, uh, you know, chat. So there I tried a couple of interesting questions, and uh, you know, uh, I was amazed at the way it thinks about. Okay, so I, I asked a question over here saying that assuming a person has a terminal disease like cancer, is it worth contemplating assisted death or is it worth ex trying experimental therapies to prolong life but with severe suffering? So this is more of an ethical, moral kind of question, right? So here uh, it did some reasoning and then, you know, it gave a decision out. So if you look at the reasoning, it says that I'm trying to figure out whether a person with a terminal illness like cancer should consider assisted death or try experimental therapies. Okay, first I need to understand what assisted death means. From what I know, it is about, you know, a person being uh, helped provide medical assistance so that they can die peacefully. On the other hand, experimental therapies are treatments that are not weight accepted or, uh, uh, you know, regulatory bodies. So I wonder how the quality of life will be in both scenarios. And then it tries to give explanations for, you know, uh, thoughts about, you know, I need to consider psychological aspects. I need to consider ethical principles. So this is exactly the kind of thought a person will have when they're facing these questions. That is what it looks to me now. It's quite close in terms of, you know, the thought process of what a human is trying to do, right? Uh, I asked another question about, you know, is the platform X heavily biased and topic? Give me reference for your justification and how do you verify your decision? So again, it goes about, you know, the thought processes I'm trying to figure out the, now the user could be biased or, you know, as for toxicity, how do you define toxicity? All those things over here. So go try out this model and, um, you know, ask your queries over here and look at the thought process to see, you know, how close it is to how a human is actually trying to solve the problem. Right. So it's quite uh, interesting. So you can actually try out DeepSeek R1 on their platform, which is chat.deepseek.com. It's also available as an API on their DeepSeek platform. OK, if I look at the API cost, it's much more cheaper than OpenAI O1. I'm not exactly sure about the factor somewhere. I read it as one tenth. Right. Um, so you can try out this over here. It's also available in Hugging Face chat, right? Uh, where you can actually uh, look at, you know, a smaller version, a distilled version of this model. You can try it over here in Hugging Face uh, chat. So here you can create a new chat and you can choose this particular model and you can try it out over there, right? It's also available on Hugging Face for you to download. And if you have the infrastructure, you can run these models, right? You have these smaller versions also over here. Um, now just let us quickly look into their technical report to see, you know, uh, how this model was created. So if I understand at a very high level, what they did was that first they created a template and data like this. Okay. I will show you that uh, template. So this was the template for deep sea car one zero, where there is this uh, conversation between user and assistant. The user asks a question, assistant solves it. The assistant first thinks about the reasoning process in the mind and then provides the user with the answer. The reasoning process and answer are enclosed within the think, think attacks and answer attack, answer is within the answer, answer attacks respectively. Think is for the reasoning process here and answer is answer over here. Uh, the user prompt is given and assistant generates the response. Okay, so that is the uh, template for, uh, you know, uh, Deep seek R10. That is the initial model. Uh, so they use something called as uh, group relative policy optimization. So what they are saying is that uh, we explore the potential of LLM to develop reasonable without any supervised data. Okay. Uh, focusing on their self evolution through a pure reinforcement learning process. Okay. That is what they are saying over here. Um, so using that, what they have done is that uh, they do reward modeling. The reward is the source of the training signal, which decides the optimization direction. Uh, so they use a rule-based reward system, uh, two types of rewards, the accuracy 
reward model evaluates whether the response is correct. For example, in the case of math problem with deterministic results, the model is required to provide the answer in a specific format. Similarly, for read lead code problems and so on. Format rewards, in addition to accuracy reward, we employ a format reward model that enforces the model to put its thinking process between think and think tax. Okay. So based on that, they are doing it. So they are using this uh, training uh, template. Okay. Uh, and uh, what they are saying over here is that uh, here they are showing the performance of that on the training data. That is what they are saying over here. So this model uh, started showing re uh, robust reasoning capabilities. Um, then what they observed is that as this model was getting trained, um, uh, it started giving more longer responses. Okay. And somewhere during the training, they observed something called as an aha moment for the model where the model started giving more time to a problem, right? Allocate more uh, thinking time to a problem by re-evaluating its initial approach and then started giving better results. Okay. So this is an example where they said an uh, aha moment of an intermediate version. So wait, it, it is trying to solve a problem. Then it says, wait, there is an aha moment I can flag here. Let's reevaluate this step and then, you know, it can create a better solution. Okay. So this is what they said is like a aha moment for them also to witness the power and beauty of reinforcement learning. Okay. So with uh, deep seek R1 zero, it exhibited strong reasoning capabilities and autonomously developed expected uh, unexpected and powerful reasoning behaviors. It still had some issues like poor readability and language mixing. So what they did was they did deep seek R1, uh, which was reinforcement learning with cold start. So what they did over here is that they created a lot of uh, initial data, which had chain of thought prompting uh, chain of thoughts, clear chain of thoughts, right? Uh, and few short prompting examples with a long chain of thought as an example. So they used that uh, kind of data and again did reinforcement learning on, uh, you know, from uh, the deep seek R10, they again did uh, data to fine tune, uh, you know, uh, deep seek V3 base as a starting point for RL. So that is what they did over here and using this, they got a better version. Okay. Now let's go to the conclusion of the paper. This very high level, if you require, I can do a detailed uh, explanation of things over here. It will take some time. But if you look at the conclusion, what they are saying is that deep seek R10 presents a pure RL approach. Deep seek R1 is more powerful, leveraging cold start data. And this achieves performance comparable to a open AI O1, this thing over here. Uh, so the general capability, what they are saying is that uh, the following directions they want to improve. They want to improve uh, general capability for multi-turn complex role playing and JSON output kind of things in the future with function calling and other things. Language mixing is currently optimized for Chinese and English, which may result in language mixing issues when handling queries in other languages. So they want to improve that. They want to improve. It is currently sensitive to prompts. So they want to, uh, you know, few short prompting consistently degrade its performance. They want to look at improving that. And uh, due to long evaluation times, which impact the efficiency, large scale cannot be deployed extensively in software engineering tasks. So they want to see how they can improve the performance to improve efficiency. Okay. So this is about a uh, deep seek R1 release, right? Now, if you look at the parameter size of this model, I think it's close to 660, uh, you know, million parameters or billion parameters. That is what it is. I want to see if it is put somewhere over here. All right, uh, R1, let's go over here and see the model card. Okay, it has 685 billion parameters. Okay, um, other details would be present over here. So you have smaller, uh, so the, uh, the bigger model is like 671 billion parameters. So at any time in inference, 37 billion parameters are activated. Okay. Um, that is what is present over here. There are smaller distilled models from this, right? Uh, which have been distilled. So these models are smaller parameters model, which you can run on your hardware, something like, uh, you know, this Lama 3.18 billion distill. Um, so you can try out these models as well. Okay. So this distilled models are fine tuned based on open source model using samples generated by deep seek R1. So they change their config and tokenizers and the thing. So you can try out these models as well. So this was about deep seek R1, a very exciting model. 
I haven't been this excited for a language model since a long time. Uh, I, I was thinking that the models are getting kind of saturated and out comes this with, you know, being a fully open source model and exactly opposite of what OpenAI wanted to when they started and what they are now, right? So that's why they are putting this thing or saying that pushing, you know, boundaries of OpenAI. And they have 32 and 70 billion models on par with OpenAI O and Mini. Um, so this should create more uh, opportunities for research and more improvised models coming in the future. So this is an excellent work by DeepSeek. Uh, to create this model and as well as uh, release it in open source, right? Open model, not exactly open source, but open models. Okay. And uh, you can go and try out uh, their platform as well. I hope this video is useful to you. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. See you in another video.